Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Today on Sports Files, we'll look back at the Tigers in Cincinnati and chat with some of the Tigers' most dedicated and diehard fans. Liberty Bowl Stadium was rocking Thursday night as the Tigers took on the Cincinnati Bearcats in the Tigers AAC opener. It also happened to be a national televised game. The Tigers had a chance to showcase the school, the program, and Justin Fuente got that national attention that he very much deserves. The Tigers are off to a great start this season, and a lot of Tiger fans who have been lukewarm have jumped on the bandwagon. But throughout the years, there have been many lean years when it comes to Memphis Tigers football. There was certainly that great era during D'Angelo Williams' time in Memphis. But other than that, sprinkled in here and there a good season. But for the most part, some really tough seasons to digest, especially for those diehard fans. And some of those fans, as I mentioned, have stood by this program through thick and thin. Today, I'll talk to three of them to find out what they think about the program and where it is now. That's next on Sports Files. John, Chris, Jimmy, thank you so much for joining me. Fun times for Memphis Tigers football. Oh, it's about absolutely. time, right? Last year was terrific. We got a follow-up season that's been great. John, let me start with you. Uh, so many lean years, so many tough times. How good does it feel to see the response that Justin Fuente has brought with him with this program? Oh, it's. Uh, I wake up every day with a smile on my face thinking Tiger football. It's that good. Uh, you know, uh, it's just Tiger football now. It's, if you look at it, and I'm trying not to look ahead, Three weeks from now, we get wins in Cincinnati, against Cincinnati tonight in South Florida. It's been a year that we've won every game we played. And that is just, that wakes, I hate to be weird about it, but I wake up in the morning smiling about Tiger football. It's weird. Chris, you picked the perfect year to be the president of the Highland 100. Absolutely. I timed that perfectly, yes. <laughs> How do you feel about what has transpired here over the last couple of years? Well, I've, I'm probably a new guy to Tiger Tiger Athletics, Tiger Sports. I've been following them since about the you know mid-90s. Uh, but uh, this time, this age right now that we're in with the administration, uh, our new AD, I call him new, uh, Mr. Tom Bowen, uh, the hiring of Justin Fuente and his staff, uh, keeping this staff together, I think, is the key to, to our success right now. Uh, be able to keep most of these guys on board for the last three years not only lends itself to a consistency amongst our players and how they recruit, but uh, just overall consistency on how the team is managed and, and uh, our, our uh, uh, you know, I think it's very, very evident on the contributing factor to uh, us winning. So, Jimmy, there's been diehards like yourselves, all the guys here that have been through the thick and thin. But I would imagine right now the bandwagon's got a lot of room, and you wouldn't mind a lot more people jumping on it. Bandwagon's great. I mean, this town, Memphis, we love winners. We love winners, be it the Grizzlies, be it the Tigers. We love something we can grasp onto that we can find a connection to. The grit and grind of the Grizzlies. Well, the grit and grind of the Grizzlies is wonderful, but the the blue collarness of the Memphis Tigers is something that we get out there and we work hard. Something they can catch on and latch onto is wonderful. And that's something that the city has been great with. You find a winner, they latch onto it. Now, we've been here, a lot of us have been here for many years when it's been very lean, very cold, October. October nights out here with three, 4,000 folks in the stadium on a Tuesday night against East Carolina. It's been cold out here, but we welcome everybody. We open arms, and we welcome the Tiger Nation. This is a great time. So the question would be, why? Why through all those bad years, all those times you suffered, why did you stick with it, John? Well, it's my school. Um, I'm a three, we, my family is a three-generation Memphis family. My father, my daughter. And I all have degrees from Memphis. It's it's our school. It's our community. And and I believe that college athletics just isn't 
football or basketball or baseball. Uh, college athletics is representative of a community, and I'm real big on that. Um, I, I'm proud of my degree from Memphis. I'm proud of my daughter's degree. Uh, it was a proud day as a father to see her graduate, or, or the day she told me she was going to Memphis. Not like she had a choice, but <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it's it's more than just a game or an event. It's 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 a it's a way of life. To, matter of fact, Jimmy's wife and I had classes together back in the early nineties. There's that connection. Yeah, and we, even with what you say, John, which is accurate, certainly you're an, you're an alum of this school mm-hmm. through thick and thin and all that stuff. But but Jimmy, I would imagine even alum. And, and diehard Tiger fans, you had to be getting sick for a while there with heartbreaking losses, games you were never in, and, you know, now it's just it's fun times here at Memphis. But those times, did you ever think, ah, I'm just not going to go to a game? Well, you always had in the pit of your stomach that that that, that loss and the, that just angst to not do that. But, I mean, like, I hate to say this, I, I got a scholarship. I'm originally from Spartanburg, South Carolina. I'm not a Memphis born and bred kid. I came to University of Memphis, got a scholarship here at University of Memphis, came here, fell in love with the city. Just fell in love with the city, the barbecue, the everything that's here. I just fell in love with the city, fell in love with the University of Memphis. And through thick and thin, yes, I mean, I don't want to call it like a bad marriage or bad relationship, but you, you, you've been the hard times there. And there's been many times I've shaken my head and gone, why? Why do I do this? But. I then look at the fun times and the best things, the fellowship, the friends. John and I, uh, we would never be friends outside of Tiger football. I, I, I would just, just, we would probably would not have met before. Different type people. Maybe. Different, totally different type people. Uh, George Powell, I mean, there's so many friends that tailgate close to us. We would never have been best of buds or friends or who tailgate and have fun times. But here being, we have a connection with the University of Memphis. It's something that gives us a connection. And it's kind of like, you're a Maryland grad. You're, 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 you've got that connection there with your school and your family and there. This connection here, there, that just it's wonderful. Chris, with the Highland 100, have you found more people inquiring about how to become a member with the success of the football team? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we, our membership, I think last year was around 375. This year it's up to about 450 or so. You know, with success, it's easier to recruit people. It's easier to go out to to companies and small businesses and, and gain their support to support the program and all that. There's one thing I'd like to say about the last question you had. I think a lot of us have been fans and supporters of Memphis football for you know for the student athlete too. I mean, we have a function every year where we bring bring these young men into our homes, feed them a, a home cooked meal. Mm-hmm. It's probably one of the greatest events the Highland Hunter does. And to get to know these guys on a personal level, get their phone numbers, you know, uh, just talk to them. They're more than they're, just number 20, they're, number 32, they're, they're number 44. Guys. You know, winning, losing, whatever. These guys deserve our support. Uh, they're out here on the field. They're giving it their all. And, uh, you know, that's all we can ask of them. And, you know, it's, it's all about supporting in my opinion, it's about supporting the school and it's supporting our student athletes that go out here and give their give their best effort on the field. Let me add to something. I graduated from Memphis in 2002. I was 43 years old. I, I was in class with a lot of football players who became friends, and and to this day I talk to them. I, one one former player's kids called me the same thing my grandkids called me. So I mean, we still have that relationship years and years down the road and they they become friends and the extended family for, for some I'm sure when the Tigers are on the road and they see you even though you need a haircut they're uh, very you've they're been very, saying that for 11 I know years I have. <laughs> I, hey you can grow it I can't but I, I, I know that they're happy to see familiar faces and I know Chris you go on the road and Jimmy when you get you haven't missed a game since 2010. what 2010. You, you drove to Los Angeles. I've, I've driven to every one of those, yeah. Uh, I've driven to Los Angeles, Miami, Philadelphia, Connecticut. Some people um, think you're crazy. I am. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, my wife thinks I'm crazy. And, and let, me, let me first and foremost make, make perfectly clear, she's the reason I can do that. She supports me with it. Uh, it you know, finances can be tough to do all that. Right. But my wife has been just a champ through it. And she's only questioned it once. And that was in 2011. Jimmy, Justin Fuentes brought a whole new attitude to this program. Obviously, we don't know the future. We don't know if Memphis will get into a Power Five. We don't know how many different schools will come a-calling. He is a hot coach right now. The big question is, if 
and more than likely when Justin leaves, can this program be sustained with the next coach and the coach after that? Because two, three good years is fantastic. We had it with D'Angelo. But how can you get, continue the success over a long period of time? I think that's a really good question. So we've had those opportunities. We've had those chances to, to build a program and move on, but things have happened. Uh, we've lost a coach in a plane crash back long before I came to the University of Memphis. I didn't even know that history until I became a fan. But we've had those opportunities. D'Angelo, we should have built off of that. I think right now with the administration we have, Dr. Rudd, if you do not follow him on Twitter, you need to follow him on Twitter. Oh, yeah. He, he is supportive not just of the football program but the athletic program in general. And I want to thank him for doing that. But th those are the kind of folks – the administration builds and moves on. If we lose a coach, I do not want to see Justin leave. I'd love to see Justin make his University of Memphis experience a TCU experience where he builds a program, builds a legacy. But there's an opportunity that he may make more money elsewhere. And if he leaves, I, I tip my hat and say thank you for helping us. But we need to make sure that administration and the boosters are there to make sure we grow that program, not take a step back, but a step forward. It's been since 2009 that the Tigers have played on ESPN, nationally televised game during prime time. Or 2008, I think it might have yeah, been. Yeah. 2008, actually, against Louisville. So it's been a long time coming. Chris, how neat is it to have the national exposure, all eyes on Memphis, on Liberty Bowl Stadium, on the Tigers, and this great city of ours tonight? Well, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, what better way to showcase what we have uh, since you know, since 2008, a lot has changed here. Uh, and what better place to do it on ESPN on Thursday night, showcase our stadium, our Tiger Lane atmosphere, uh, Beale Street and all that, you know, uh, and, and our football team, our young men that are out there on the field. Uh, I, I'm looking very much forward to this game. I think it's going to be a hard-fought game. Uh, hopefully we come out on top and we can uh, put a little statement uh, going into our conference schedule with a win. Quick question for all of you. What do you think the ceiling is at maximum? Tiger football, let's say, is sustained for five, ten years, every year going to bowl games. All of a sudden, they become a program that people notice around the nation. As far as the support, how many thousands are we talking about? Labor will say the whole is 59,000 folks. How many we put it on there, it, I mean, it, we can fill that up. We can be a nice 30,000 folks stadium. You got to understand, Kansas, we went to Kansas. That's a big power conference team. 25, 30,000 folks in that stadium. We can easily outmatch that every single weekend. Bad or good, we can do that. But us growing and growing our fan base, this city has unlimited potential to be Memphis fan base. Do you agree? I think the ceiling is is what we make it. Uh, I think we can fill that place every night. I think uh, a Memphis in a Big 12. Really? No, yeah. you're not just looking at this through blue-colored no, glasses, No, right? I think Memphis in the Big 12 with a program year in, year out, and to that degree, I think the, the administration will do what it takes to keep Justin here, and I think we can do that. And I think we, the, the ceiling is as much as that building to hold if we make the commitment to it and with the Time to Shine program, the commitment by Dr. Rudd, the commitment by Tom Bowen, the commitment by Justin Fuente, and by, commitment by the people out here today. I think the ceiling is we don't quite know what that is yet. All right, we got about a minute, so I want this quick. Best road trip for Tigers football, Chris, that you've been on? Uh, first bowl game down in New Orleans. Uh, long, dry spell. Man, we had I don't know how many people down there. It was there. great. I was there. We it was cold, the, too, down we, there. We New rocked Orleans. the Super Superdome big time. So, yeah, we had a great time. John? Yeah, it's hard to outdo that one because it was – I was in a parade, for goodness sake. Um, I'll say going to Marshall. Marshall was always fun. Greatest people on the planet. I think every college football fan should go there. Jimmy? I'm biased because I love barbecue. UAB because of Battle of the Bones <laughs> barbecue contest. I've won that contest multiple times. I'd love to do that game again just so I can beat them again barbecue. You have the darn trophy because we don't know where that trophy is. Uh, Je uh, Jeff Cupper for the football operations. He's got the trophy. He won't let me have it. <laughs> he won't let me take it to my store. It's a big, beautiful bronze rack of ribs. He just won't let me have it. it you need a like U-Haul to carry that thing around. It weighs so much. Well, guys, it has been absolutely terrific. Chris, John, Jimmy, thank you so much. Continued success to Tiger football, and thanks for being diehards. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you. Go Tigers.
And a big thank you to John, Jimmy, and Chris. They are certainly Tiger super fans. Well, from the fans to the players, the guys that are making it happen on the field, here's one of our stars of the game. Baxton, yep. congratulations, another wild game. Is this what we can expect to see from this team this year? It's just the way you guys are, are made up? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I can't really tell the future that well, but uh, we're going we're gonna to keep grinding week to week and preparing week to week to go win a ball game, and we're going to give ourselves a chance to win the, win the ball game every week just like we did for the past 11 games. I know you guys probably don't feel as a whole that you played your best football game, a lot of mistakes. You've gotten behind the last three weeks, but the resiliency of this team really has uh, – has been the product of, uh, of you guys uh, being all together, all on the same page. In the last three weeks, you were able to fall behind early and come back and win, and that included tonight. Yeah, uh, you know, we pride ourselves in, in being a team. You know, there's there's not one guy on the team that can that can do it all by himself, not me, not anybody on defense, not anybody on the offense. So it, t it takes all 11 guys out on the field and the whole team to be backing them up when they're on the field to go out there and make plays. So, you know, we really pride ourselves in being a, in being a team and having each other's back. Talk about the game-winning drive, down the wire, making the plays. Did you feel you had Cincinnati on its heels? Uh, I felt like that we had put a couple good drives together before then. You know, we had kind of been sputtering early in the, f in the first half and kind of early in the second half, but, you know, we kind of got on a roll and, got, and found our rhythm and it felt like that we were just clicking with the receivers and running the ball. With the huge crowd, the national audience, what do you think you told people about Memphis Tiger football? I think we told them that, just like Coach Fuente said, we're resilient. We're, we're out here to grind. We're going to grind every week, you know, to get that win. And that's, what, and that's what we prepare for. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anthony, being a Christian Brothers product, going out there in front of friends and family and performing tonight on a national stage, what did it feel like? Uh, it felt great. I just, it's just a great feeling. Like, I've worked so hard just to get here. And it's kind of emotional, emotional for me because I've just worked so hard to get here. It's been a long road for me, and I, I'm just looking forward to celebrating this win with my brothers. You become a go-to target. When the ball is there, you're able to snatch it. You don't drop many passes. Uh, that's got to give your quarterback, Paxton Lentz, uh, a lot of confidence to go to you as a go-to guy. Uh, I don't mind that at all, but it's really about team first. Any guy could get the ball at any time. All of us are capable of making a play. So. It's all about the getting a win in the end. Talk about the game-winning drive. Obviously, you went for it the series before on fourth down, came up short. You had the opportunity again, and you came through, making big plays after big plays. Talk about the drive. Did you feel you had Cincinnati backpedaling a bit, maybe a little bit tired out there? Uh, no, sir. I believe they were fully alert and ready for anything. But our execution level, coach, Coach always pounds, 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 execution, 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 and that's what we did. You, ne you never get down on yourselves. So far. you look at this team, what you guys done this year, you've fallen behind three weeks now in a row, and you have that resiliency to come back. What is it about you guys that you're able to battle back from a little early adversity in the game? Man, it's just something in here. It's something in here that a lot of people, a lot of teams don't have, and that's what we have. We work hard. We grind. We grind every day. Like, we're grinding tomorrow. We got lifts. Let's run tomorrow, so this doesn't stop. We're looking on to next week, going one to know next week. How does it feel to, to not play collectively your, your best football game, to make some mistakes and still go out there, beat the team that was picked to win the conference, start out your conference record one to know, and still remain undefeated with your 11th straight win? Again, not knowing or knowing that you did not play your best football. Uh, it feels great, but at the same time, we look at ourselves like we're looking down on ourselves right now because we know we play like – not that good of a game. Right. So <laughs> we're thankful for the win, but we got to look at this film and get stuff right so we won't make these same mistakes again. And a quick thought on the great crowd. Sir? Quick thought on the great crowd, the atmosphere. Uh, it's Memphis. It's, it's a hard environment. I love my people. I love when they come around. They showed up today, and I appreciate them. Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate it. Three, two, one. Sports Files, we always look for unique stories, stories off the beaten path. Well, here's one that's off every path imaginable. It's the Go Ape Treetop Adventure at Shelby Farms. It opened up in March. It's one of only 12 in the entire country, and it is a kick, folks. If you like climbing, if you like swinging, if you like going up and down on zip lines, you're going to absolutely love it. 
earlier in the week, I had a chance to experience it firsthand. It was a lot of fun. It was a little scary for me. I'm not uh, inclined to love the heights, but I certainly had a good time, and I found out more about what they had to offer as I sat down with site manager Zach Schroeder. Well, Zach, thanks for spending some time with us. Appreciate it. So Absolutely. Let's talk about this. Go Ape Treetop Adventure. What's this all about? Yes, sir. So a treetop adventure course um, is a series of different obstacles, uh, ladders, swings, ropes, obstacles, all mixed in with a little bit of zip lining. All together, it gives you about two and a half, three hour treetop adventure up in the treetops. Great time. When did this begin here at Shelby Farms? We opened up March 21st of this year, and we've been kicking ever since. And I would imagine there's others around the country? Absolutely. Right now, we have 12 courses uh, total around the country, and we plan on opening five new ones next season. I'm sure a lot of people are watching this right now. They're wondering, well, I, I'm a little bit out of shape, uh, I'm a little big, I don't know if this would be for me. What are the restrictions and, and who is this for? Sure, well, first and foremost, we always recommend people to come out, check out the course, um, try it out. Um, our restrictions, you have to be at least 10 years old and at least 4'7 in height. Um, those are our two minimums that we do have. Um, weight restrictions, 285 is recommended, but it is subject to harness fit. Do you know how the negotiations went. How did how did Shelby Farms and Go Ape connect where they were able to bring this to, to Memphis? Sure, so with all of our courses we have a great relationship with our parks. Um, we have what we call a park partnership. Um, so we work out details between each other. Um, they help bring people to our course, we help bring people in um, to the park and get to enjoy the outdoors. I would imagine with the construction of this course having Shelby Farms and all that it has to offer was pretty easy to, to come up with great ideas for what to do as far as putting stations together and getting this course finished. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, the park was really excited to have us in here. Um, they worked with us very well. Um, we obviously worked with them very well. Um, got the course set up and everyone's been enjoying it ever since. Are all courses that you have around the country, are they basically different or are they all the same model? Yeah, so each course is unique in its own way. Some courses have um, different obstacles that some don't. Um, everyone's obstacles are just a little bit different in length or size. Um, but for the most part, we, um, for the majority, all use the same safety system. Um, we all use the same training, um, so it kind of gives it some consistency across the board. So if you visit another course, you can expect the same uh, kind of energy um, as you would from all the courses, but always something a little bit unique in every course. Some people I'm sure have, have done this before. There are others like myself have never done this. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that you uh, give pretty good instruction um, to, to the folks that have not done this before so they know kind of what they're doing when they get up there for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. Our instructors are highly trained in the safety brief um, that we give them. Typically it takes about 30 minutes to get through. Um, and after that, you know, we can see if someone is capable of going up on the course. And if we feel like, um, you know, someone's just going to be a little too unsafe, then we have the ability to then, uh, you know, just kind of take over from there. So if they're, you said it's about a three hour deal. Absolutely. About an hour and a half in, you're either fatigued or you're a little scared. You can stop? Absolutely. So the beauty of our course um, is that at the uh, when you come down the zip lines, you come back down to the ground. So you're not stu stuck up in trees for you know three hours straight. Um, so if you get about halfway through, you're back on the ground, you decide you had your fun for the day, you can absolutely go ahead and stop. I know the question I would have for you, and the question I'm sure a lot of people would out there, is, is maintenance. How often is this course checked over to make sure it's up to safety measures. Absolutely, so our instructors check uh, the course daily. Opening and closing checks get carried out every single day. Um, a monthly, super thorough monthly inspection is done by myself uh, once a month on every single site. And we do have annual inspections from the state uh, and our higher ups that are uh, trained to more thoroughly look through the course. Zach, from a physical standpoint, how demanding is it and how good is it for your cardio? Yeah, we, um, it's definitely good for your cardio. You're gonna get a little bit of a workout up there. Uh, we like to say if you can climb a rope ladder, uh, you can definitely get through the course. There's always easier ways through some of the obstacles that may seem a little challenging. Um, but we like to give people a chance to try out a ladder. You know, that's usually the hardest thing to do. So if they can do that, they can pretty much conquer the whole course. Okay, the show is airing with National Live Life Adventurously Day tomorrow. Uh, for those watching us on Sunday morning, it's actually today. What is this? Tell everybody about it and what it benefits. Yeah, absolutely. We're super excited about Live Life Adventurously Day. 
Um, what we're doing there, first, guests who are coming out on that day can receive 20% off of their booking, so that's super cool. Um, but even better than that, every ticket we sell, we're matching it and giving back to Big Brothers Big Sisters. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Zach, I'm about to try this. What, uh, what advice would you give me? I would say just relax, definitely get excited, and we're going to have a good time up in the trees. Zach, thank you so much. Absolutely. It was Appreciate a pleasure. It. Thanks to Zach and big ups to Casey. She was my instructor and she was absolutely terrific. We appreciate her putting on the GoPro camera to get that vantage point that we certainly hope you enjoyed. And to find out more information about the Go Ape treetop adventure, simply go to their website, goape.com. And that'll do it for this week's show. Remember to see any of our previous shows, simply go to our website, wkno.org, or simply go to YouTube. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.